which was the, at the back of the congregation. When the Prophet ﷺ finished his salah, he sat on the, and remember, smiling, and said everyone should stay in his place. SubhanAllah, how blessed, how blessed, you know, they were, and what an opportunity that was to be in the presence of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, receiving this smile and instructions from him. Telling them to remain in your place. And tell me, by Allah, if the Messenger of Allah told you to remain in your place, would you want to get up? No. So why do we disobey him now? Isn't it the same thing? It's the same thing. Did he tell us not to do certain things now? We do them. And he told them to do, to do some things now, which we insistently don't do. Consistently and we insist on not doing, no matter what. No matter how clear the truth becomes, we just don't care. This is called hypocrisy. And this is called a fake kind of love. And this is called contradiction. Because now when I ask us, all of us, would you disobey him if he told you to sit down? Say, I'm not going to get up if he told me to sit down. It's the same thing. The tradition, the hadith which came to you, came to you so you can act upon it today. This applies to the brothers and the sisters. Well, I understand. He said, remain in your place. He said, you know why I asked you to assemble? The people said, Allah and His Messenger know best. He said, by Allah, I have not gathered you here to give you an exhortation or a warning. I have kept you here because of Tamim al-Dari. Tamim al-Dari was a Christian man who has, become, who has come and embraced Islam. Told me, the Prophet said, he told me, Something which agrees with that which I have told you about the Dajjal. He told me that he had sailed in a ship with 30 men from Banu Lakhm and Banu Judan. The waves had tossed them about for a month. Then they were brought near to an island at the time of sunset. They landed on the island and were met by a beast. Slow down who was so hairy that they could not tell its front from its back. They said, woe to you. What are you? Wailak. What are you? It said, I am Al-Jassasa. I am Al-Jassasa. They said, what is Al-Jassasa? It said, O oh people, go to this man in the monastery uh, in British monastery, for he is very eager to know about you. Tamim said that when it, when it named a person to us, we were afraid lest it be a devil. He said, go to this person, he's waiting for you, he's anxious for you to come. They were afraid this would be a devil. Tamim said, we quickly went to the monastery. There we found a huge man with his hands tied up to his neck and with iron shackles between his legs up to the ankles. We said, woe to you, who are you? He said, you will soon know about me. Tell me who you are. He's telling them, tell me who you are. We said, Tamim is saying, we are people from Arabia. And they brought us uh, to the island. When we met a beast who was so hairy that we could not tell his friend, from its back. We said to woe to you, what are you? And it said, I am a Jassasa. We asked, what is a Jassasa? And it told us, go to this man in the monastery, for he is very eager to know about you. And it told us, uh, now, so we came to you quickly, fearing that it might be a devil. The man said, tell me about the date palms of Baisan. We said, what do you want to know about them? He said, I want to know whether these trees bear fruit or not. We said, yes. He said, soon they will not bear fruit. Then he said, tell me about the lake of Tabaria. Uh, we said, what do you want to know about it? He asked, is there water in it? We said, there's plenty of water in it. He said, soon there will be no water in it. It will become dry. Then he said, tell me about the spring of Zuha. We said, what do you want to know about it? He said, is there water in it? And does it irri uh, irrigate the land? We said, yes, there's plenty of water. And the people use it to irrigate the land. 
Then it said, tell me about the unlettered prophet. What has he done? We said he has left Mecca and settled in Yathrib. Yathrib is another name of Medina. He has, do the Arabs fight against him? We said, yes. He said, how does he deal with them? So we told him that the Prophet ﷺ had overcome the Arabs around him and that they had followed him. He asked, has it really happened? We said, yes. He said, it is better for them if they follow him. Now I will tell you about myself. I am the Dajjal. I am the Dajjal, not me. That's what he's telling him. Because now the Sufis will quote this and they'll put it on YouTube say, See, I'm almost not saying he's the Dajjal. <laughs> I will soon be permitted to leave this place. You, you think I'm joking? You will see. They do this all the time, Allah. No fear of Allah. As long as whatever supports their agenda, even if it's lies, fabrications, misquotation, no problem. No problem. They will do so. So they have the Wahhabi hunter. And in this Wahhabi hunter video, which is all music, they have myself and uh, Brother Faiz and Bilal Phillips and all these people, all these Wahhabis, you know Wahhabis? And how does the video end? It ends with a man screaming, Oh Muhammad, aid us. Shirk. The video ends with someone calling on Muhammad besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they call us Wahhabis. Ajeeb. Anywho, he said, I am the Dajjal. I will soon be permitted to leave this place. I will emerge and travel about the earth in 40 nights. I will pass through every town except Mecca and Medina. For these have been forbidden to me. Every time I try to enter either of them, I will be met by an angel bearing a drawn out sword. Who will prevent me from entering. There will be angels guarding them at every passage leading to them. Fatima said, the Prophet ﷺ strike in the pulpit with his staff said, This is Taiba. This is Taiba. This is Taiba meaning Medina. Have I told you something like this? The people said, yes. He said, I like the account given to me by Tamim because it agrees with what I have told you about the Dajjal and about Mecca and Medina. Indeed, he is in the Syrian Sea or the Yemen Sea. No, on the contrary, he is in the east. He is in the east. He is in the east and he pointed towards the east. Fatima said, I memorized this from the Prophet ﷺ. The hadith is in Muslim. So that tells you clearly that he is what? A man. He's a human being. He's a man. He's not, he's not currency. He's not money. He's not an organization. It's a single man as the hadith explicitly mentions. So anyone who misinterprets that is upon the path of deviance. And we have to be very careful, careful concerning. So these, this is some of the traditions, or these are some of the traditions pertaining to the Dajjal. Of course, there are many, many others, but the one which I would like to quote is the one where the Prophet ﷺ emphasized that he was one-eyed and your Lord is not one-eyed. Because he will claim that he is Allah. And the Prophet ﷺ taught us by saying, he is one-eyed and Allah is not. Because we believe Allah has two eyes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ There is nothing like unto him. There is nothing like unto him. And if you go back to the book of Al-Aqid al wasitiya and read the chapter on that, you will understand why we believe Allah Azza wa Jalla twice. Because he did, the Prophet denied having him, Allah having one eye. And then we have the ahadith and the ayat about the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّكَ بِأَعْيُنِنَا وَلِتُصْنَا عَلَىٰ عَيْنِي All of these are in the Qur'an. So, the Jal is one-eyed. And Allah Azza wa Jal is not. So, this is how you identify him. You identify him by the kafara on his forehead. He is one-eyed. And when he claims he is the Lord, it is not going to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And frankly, frankly, the narrations are abundant. Uh, but like I said, I will have to skip some of them. So, this is the Dajjal. Now, you know what's amazing? Even though people deny it, the hadith in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad, which is Sahih, authenticated by Ahmad Shakir, the Prophet said, إِنَّهُ سَيَكُونُ مِنْ بَعْدِكُمْ قَوْمٌ يُكَذِّبُونَ بِالرَّجِمْ 
وبالدجال وبالشفاعة وبعذاب القبر. He said to the Sahaba, they shall come people after you who will deny stoning, who will deny the Dajjal, who will deny the Shafa'a, the intercession of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and who will deny the punishment of the grave. All of these exist today among the Mu'tazila and the Ashaira and the Jahmiyyah and all those who deviated from the Aqid of Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah. Until now, people don't believe in Adab al-Qabr, they don't believe in Dajjal like I mentioned to you now, they claim that he is something else. And the Prophet ﷺ prophesied that and warned us against it. So make sure you don't fall into this category. And anyone who deviates, you can always come back. Allah will guide you and rectify your affairs.